Um, I'm Lorenzo Cironi, uh, and I'm currently working at the Institute for Theory and Computation of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics um, here in Cambridge. And um, I uh, got interested in physics uh, during high school for the first time. I was really fascinated by the possibility to, to look uh, at physics in nature uh, and unveil the laws of physics in uh, nature. Um, so I studied in Pisa for my college and then uh, I continued in uh, Princeton for my PhD. Uh, and both in Pisa and in Princeton I started to get interested on um, two separate, apparently separate subjects, but actually quite closely related. On the one hand, uh, plasma physics, which is the understanding of the processes that are happening in uh, gas, uh, in a gas made of charged particles, electrons and protons. And on the other hand, I was interested in extreme uh, astrophysical uh, systems, typically involving uh, the death of massive stars or uh, relativistic jets that are emanating from uh, black holes, typically at the centers of galaxies. So both my uh, undergraduate uh, years and my um, PhD years in Princeton were really devoted to uh, try to combine the uh, knowledge of basic physical processes in plasma physics in application to astrophysical uh, sources. And uh, this was the subject of my uh, thesis. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been the the, my main areas of uh, my main area of research uh, in the past few years, initially uh, as a, an Einstein Fellow at Harvard, and then continuing as a uh, an ITC Institute for Theory and Computation uh, Fellow uh, so far, and it still continues. My um, approach to general relativity uh, is through processes that are happening in the vicinity of systems where general relativity is important. Uh, and in particular, uh, I'm interested in what gets into the black hole and out of the black hole. Uh, and in particular, what I'm uh, currently doing research on is the physics of the material that is accreting onto uh, black holes, uh, forming what's typically known as an accretion disk or an accretion flow. I'm studying processes that are happening in the accretion flows uh, around supermassive black holes and most importantly around the black hole that we have in our backyard at the center of our own galaxy. So this is for the material that gets into the black hole. Um, black holes are also known to power very uh, extreme, very powerful relativistic jets, uh, not really in our own uh, galaxy, not for the supermassive black, holes, uh, black hole in our own galaxy, but in external galaxies, the black holes at the centers of uh, galaxies can power very relativistic jets or outflows. Um, and my work also concentrates on the physical processes that are happening uh, in such uh, systems. should also mention that uh, jets um, as relativistic outflows coming out of black holes are also seen in our galaxy, but from uh, stellar mass black holes, so black holes that are uh, that have a mass of order the mass of our own sun. So much smaller black holes uh, with respect to the black hole that is at the center of our uh, galaxy. So what gets in, what gets out, this is what I'm uh, interested in. I think this is, uh, so this is a very exciting time for uh, the type of research that I'm doing because um, we are actually at the edge of being able to describe from first principles, all of the processes that are happening both in the accretion flows around black holes and in the jets. And uh, for this, we need to rely heavily on uh, computational uh, calculations, so simulations. And uh, especially in recent years, the advancements in computing power and algorithms are actually allowing us to do this um, in a much more systematic and careful way than in the past. Um, and the power is really not in a single uh, computational um, method, but rather in integrating different computational algorithms, strategies, um, so that one particular uh, simulation tool will be used to capture the physics at very small scales, fully the physics at very small scales, and then the outputs, the results, the prescriptions for such simulations can be used within a global model, for example, of the accretion flow as a subgrid physics, as an ingredient that captures the smaller scales that are not resolved in this larger scale 
uh, global simulation. But then proceeding from the small scales all the way up to the astrophysical scales, which are typically much larger than the smallest scales in the system, you can describe self-consistently the whole system uh, with all the physics that you should be putting into the description. So a fully um, complete uh, model for both the accretion flows and jets, I think from a theoretical perspective, is within reach for the next uh, within the next uh, five or ten years, which is very exciting. It's probably the first time this is actually uh, within our reach. And on the other hand, we are we're having um, a wonderful um, experimental uh, observational opportunity to actually look at a black hole in our backyard, thanks to the Event Horizon Telescope that will be uh, giving us powerful um, images of the uh, very uh, inner edge, the, the innermost region of the accretion flows um, around the center, at the center of our uh, own galaxy. Um, this is uh, like an unprecedented chance uh, for uh, testing uh, our models to actual observations of our closest uh, black hole neighbor, the black hole at the center of our own uh, galaxy. So both from a theoretical perspective and from an observational perspective, in the next uh, few months to years, we will have the chance to actually understand much more uh, and look at much more about the physics of uh, gas and plasma around black holes than we ever had uh, in the past. I think, I think it's uh, very good. It's an excellent option to actually talk uh, to people that apparently speak a different language. So you have to um, get rid of your jargon, get to the fundamental laws of physics, which are the same for everyone. Uh, and um, being able to uh, sort of exchange information at that point because the, I think the power is really in looking at the same problem for, uh, from many different perspectives which is actually the main uh, or one of the best ways to actually do progress in science. You have um, a very detailed knowledge of one field um, and uh, you have a detailed knowledge of another field but actually the same, uh, the two fields can actually talk effectively to each other in a particular system. I'm thinking, for example, about uh, the processes that are happening in uh, jets, for example. This is uh, the so-called reconnection process that is thought to power the emission that we see from relativistic jets emanating from black holes. Reconnection has been known for a long time uh, as happening in the sun, but with very different uh, conditions than the extreme conditions that you find in jets. So it's only when talking to the solar community that reconnection could be effectively started in uh, jet systems as well. In the same way here, uh, it's only when looking at the same system, a black hole, from a mathematical perspective, a physical perspective, an astronomical perspective, that you can actually get uh, the full picture of what the, the beast actually is.